Oh, what? I'm sorry, you said hit record. Uh, well, I, I didn't, didn't mean that I wanted to st Okay, hello everyone. Welcome back to Law Horse. Um, I'm Joe. I'm Alo. And, uh... This was improvised. Um... We don't, we don't actually know what we're talking about yet. No, we have a soft uh, yes on vampires, which I will always talk a lot about. Vamp vampires could be good. There is a long list of things in my mind, but I don't want to talk about them yet. I understand, I understand. Is it more of a saving for a special occasion, or our brain is empty today? I think it's more sort of like... Um, uh, I want to give a bit of time before I repeat same like genres if that makes sense yeah like yeah. um like uh, not same genre but like same like franchises and stuff like mm -hmm. that um because like bit of a breather yeah exactly because like i've been like consuming a lot of star wars media recently and like we talked about star wars like a bit before like th that was like our first episode wasn't we did it? a whole episode i still can't remember any of the big plot beats for star wars i don't think it's not important <laughs> no i don't think so but I, I have been watching a lot of star wars media and i find it extremely fun um uh because it is silly. um but uh yeah uh i i'm i'm trying to genuinely think of the things i want to talk about i want to talk about dead by daylight mm -hmm, mm -hmm. i want to talk about dead by daylight i want to talk about um uh i don't know how this would work but i want to talk about pokemon at some point yeah absolutely yeah um i really liked it when they came out with the sheep i think he was neat oh there are so many good sheep the wooloo specifically the wooloo. i just think he looks great Mm -hmm. I'd like to keep him in my pocket, personally. He quite literally is just a sheep, but he's the best Pokemon. Absolutely. I stand by that. Do I know anything about the Pokemon? Not particularly, but I will stand by my thesis. Have, have you, yeah. So, um, we can talk about vampires. I like vampires. I think vampires are an interesting trope in media. I am a bit too enthusiastic about vampires, in my personal opinion. I just... There's so much to be said. Uh, yeah, I mean, like... You Most need... of it is very mediocre, but hey. Yeah, but you, you you even do, like, the 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 religious side of it. Like, you you even know about, like, the uh, sort of... The Catholicism? Ca yeah, the Catholicism, like, side of things. I don't know how that links to vampires, but I know you did talk about it one time. Oh, yeah. Um... Here's another good sheep Pokemon. Oh, my God. That's Flaffy. Why, why is he bipedal? Uh, he used to not be. He's just hopping around. I do like that he's pink. I think he's neat. Um, yeah, he, yeah, he turned yellow again. He was yellow to start with? Yeah, well, he evolved from Mareep, who's like a kind of a, a funky little, funky little she- I'm, I'm very bad. There we go. There's Mareep. I am familiar! Yeah! That's blue, bestie. Yeah, well, yellow as well. And then Ampharos is what he turns into, and he sits in lighthouses. You understand this Pokemon is just the pan flag, right? Yep. It's one of my favorites. Oh, gay rights. <laughs> gay gay rights. rights. Sorry, I wanted to ramble about the cute sheep Pokemon. Um, yeah, uh, vampires. They suck, they fuck, they don't die. Until they do. Until they do. Um, There's just so much to be... I understand that Dracula Daily is currently really popular on Tumblr right now. Oh yeah, it's still going, isn't it's, it? Uh, yeah, I mean, yeah, it takes a while. Um, it is still going. Off the shits, insane, unhinged. I love to see it. I've not participated just because I don't have the attention span currently, but the yeah, memes same. that are popping up, delicious, delightful. It, 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 it is quite funny that, like, that this is something I never re realized about Dracula is that, like, he's just, like, a freak. He is just kind of a freak, and he's, like, like, the British Stan. Well, it's, like, there's this one example scene where it's, like, um, who's the guy who's visiting him? John? Jonathan Harker. Yeah, Jonathan, yeah. Jonathan, people called Jonathan tend to be haunted by the supernatural a lot. They you really, notice that? They really do. The Magnus Archives, the Stranger Things, the the Dracula. My granddad. What happened? I don't know. <laughs> Probably haunted? Probably. Um, uh, yeah, but, like, he, like, John is, like, shaving in, like, a mirror, and Dracula's like, ah, I don't appear in reflections. What's the, what's, what's the, what's the normal response to hide this? Do I leave the room? Do I stand outside, st stand, of, the st stand outside of the view of the mirror? Or do I throw it out the window? <laughs> Honestly, sounds like 
a normal response to me. I mean, he hasn't he hasn't like talked to people in years, so it kind of doesn't. It's mean... just look, <laughs> Mr. Dracula is just a post lockdown us. Uh, yeah, it pre lockdown me to be honest. <laughs> oh yeah, before it gets too cold, what were we drinking? We are drinking a red velvet tea. Um, I don't super love it. I feel like it could have been steep longer or like be a bit stronger, but there's just something think, missing. Here. Yeah, I think it could. I think it needs a bit more fruitiness to it. I think like I feel like it or needs like, it a needs bit more body. body. Yeah, it needs, yeah, it needs, it needs more, more body. body. We sound like fucking Somalias. <laughs> we it, sound like Somalias. It needs more body. Uh, it, you know what? It needs a richer body, but it has a bright and uh, fragrant scent. You know what? This tea is absolutely great for making you just want to eat red velvet cake. I do. I would kill for a red velvet cake. Just like a with um, like normal tea, a soft cheese like icing. Mm, yeah, that could be really. Mm. Yeah, my my dad made like a really nice like red velvet cake with like frosting. I think after this episode, I'm just going to go down to Asda and get a cake. Oh, fuck yeah. It's, I think it's what I deserve. Or maybe like a cupcake, maybe, if they've got small ones. You could get the cake mix and then make it, and then like, make it yourself. In this economy? I don't know why I looked over at my kitchen. The sink is full, maybe that's why. Yeah, that's... I got my nails done, I can't do dishes. Yeah, you do get your nails done, they look lovely, but also that terrifying. Look, just because I'm like more metal than you and I can handle my nail beds getting drilled, uh... um... Uh, for context, I got my nails done for the first time in like seven or eight years, like a full-on um, gel manicure, and the lady who was absolutely delightful had this like drill, and she just like drills away like the dead skin around the nail bed so that she can like, prepare the cuticles and put the gel on. It was a it was a nice experience, you know. It was like, get, like getting like a skin scrub or something, <sighs> rejuvenating, refreshing. You, you bled. No, that wasn't because of the drill. It was because I got really sensitive cuticles, and when she was like cutting. Oh no. no 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 no! Maybe just don't be a coward. Look, it didn't even hurt. I like designing monsters and gross icky stuff. This is that's uh, too real. That's can't, too. Can't, re- can't take what you dish out. No, I can't. Sucks to suck, I guess. It really does. Like it's kind of just unpleasant. I think I would survive a horror film just because I can handle my nails getting semi-drilled. Oh, I was talking about sucking dick, but. Look, girly. <laughs> Some of us. Some of us what? Too good to suck a dick. Okay, I'm I'm too I'm too I'm too good to get my nails done. You're too good to suck a dick. And together. Character progression. Character progression. More. Anyway, facts. vampires. Um. I think they're neat, but also they're so so silly. What is your favorite interpretation of a vampire? Like, what's your favorite like universes like vampire? I personally, and this is a bias, absolutely, I personally really enjoy um, BBC Being Humans vampires. Mm. Um, I can you know, agree with that. They have the fangs that come out out of nowhere and their eyes go black, which is fun. They go out in the daylight, that's fine. Crucifixes still hurt them, though. Um, and so I think can, I think they can also be murdered by, yeah, they can be murdered by um, wooden stakes and, wooden stakes yeah, and such. Yeah. But also they don't need to drink it's like an they describe it more as, as an addiction, but it's not like if you don't drink the blood, you will waste away and die. It is just like an addiction is a need. Yeah. And um, so in the, the first season, you have like the usual trio, which is the vampire, the werewolf, and the ghost, and they are hanging out their besties as it is, and then eventually like their story arcs progress and and they start off fresh in like season three or season four with a new vampire werewolf ghost trio Mm. and that vampire is like older than the crucifix i'm pretty sure and he hasn't drunk blood in like a few centuries he just doesn't do it fully self-controlled and i think that's so fucking neat Mm. it's like it's like it's like the the curse that they're they're afflicted with Mm -hmm. is like it's this addiction it's you know, it I, is. I feel like it I harks mean, back more to sort of the old religious way of looking at vampirism as like a disease, like a, an actual illness yeah, disease yeah. sent out to tempt you by the devil, sort of thing. And I like that vibe. Yeah, it it was really interesting, and like having like a trope of vampire, which was um, you can get out of it, like you can. Like, you don't need to kill people. No, it's about... I like mind over matter. I like when um, the world system, the world building system functions within a sense of... Can you think yourself... Can you think your way out of it? Can you think your way out of it? Yes? Then do that. Just do better. Get good. And I think that's great. Yeah, it also, like, it kind of 
works more scientifically as well because it's like I imagine vampires like can, like in that universe can they eat like yeah. food yeah they absolutely they eat all the time yeah so it's like it's almost like well the blood itself seems to just be the necessary thing because that's the addictive stuff that's the addictive stuff it's literally just like because yeah. I, I assume well obviously he's still immortal and like he's still like yeah he doesn't age like still got his vampire shit like I he... just yeah I, I think that's gr- I think it's such an interesting one and, like it really feeds into the whole like concept of like morality guilt uh, like like it's oh it's so delectable it's so succulent I think it's great it's incredible mm-hmm. um I also have like a very like firm memory in my head of like the book series I read when I was a teenager called um. There was two of them. One was called the Marked series, and one was called the Morganville Vampires. Mm-hmm. Um, one is set in like Oklahoma, um, and it's essentially that vampires have been around since almost before humans, but it's like it's like they're separated but integrated in society. Yeah, and that um, certain vampires will go out into human society to find like teenagers and mark them with like a, an outline of a crescent moon on their forehead that marks them out as being like a fledgling. At which point they have to go to like a vampire commune or a school or something like that. They go to a school oh, essentially, I see. where they must be around other vampires and be taken care of to like be able to grow. And the like survival rate is quite low. Mm. Like a lot of them end up like dying of like seizures and stuff before they actually fully mature into a full vampire before their mark gets filled in. I see. Um, and like there's there's interesting mechanics in that world where there's like. These vampires have been around since the whole time the history teacher was on the like on the Titanic, like all sorts of different things, bits and pieces, and of course it's just like a mechanism for filling like, um, like, teenager like romance novel like adventure fantasy, but like the way the world was built was so interesting because they also had access to magic if you were like a gifted enough um, vampire a fledgling that was blessed by the goddess because it's a goddess and this her name is Nyx I think yeah uh, you can access the magic and this and this and that and you make like circles you make almost like a coven it's almost like a blend of vampires and witchcraft and they all worship their goddess who like can consciously come in and out it's just it's so it's interesting like, is it is it like a sort of the thing where like all vampires start off as human but like as they reach like maturity sometimes a human just turns into a vampire they get seeked out and marked they get seeked out and marked like like deliberately so it's like it's a vampire's choice to mark someone as a vampire i think it's that there's certain vampires who are like given a sort of like almost holy quest to uh bring fledglings in i see the I ones see. that are already been marked by the goddess oh I see, I, see, I see what you mean so it's, it's like, like a predetermined thing okay so that, that that's kind of similar to like how the jedi work huh in star wars because like um gonna say this right now the jedi order um not vampires but they are a cult they they are absolutely a cult. Yeah, this is very culty. Um, the the Jedi. Uh, I'll I'll give like a brief explanation of the Force within the Star Wars universe. The only magic that occurs is something called the Force. The Force is essentially it surrounds and is within every single living thing. Every mm-hmm. single living thing is part of the Force, and the Force is nature. The Force is balance. The Force is an ecosystem. The Force is a human is a human being and the jedi have the ability to manipulate the force Mm -hmm. so they can use it to basically like at a very basic level they might be able to see slightly into the future they're like literally like seconds or they might be able to lift things with their mind it's like esp yeah it's like a it's like a psychic sort of Mm -hmm. uh thing but like they have this ability to do it now the jedi order are basically a group of monks who live and are associated with uh, a government called the Republic, the the Grand Republic. Mm -hmm. And the Republic at the time was the main government of the galaxy and such like that. The Jedi were basically their warriors. They were called peacekeepers, but they were essentially superhuman warriors uh, that, like, they could deflect, like, blaster shots through their fast reflexes and also the fact that they could see things before they happened. Whack shit, honestly. That's how they, that's how they get away with like using a lightsaber and not a ranged weapon is that they can just see the future and deflect things before they happen. And also they can throw things around their mind and also the 
fucking super fast. And also, sometimes the Force leaves memories in objects that they can see. That's really interesting. The Jedi are like, like the, the Force is like a concept, it's like a really fun idea. But yeah, anyway, onto the culty side. People who are indoctrinated into the Jedi Order are done so for m- two reasons. Mm-hmm. First reason is to get more Jedi. Second reason is to avoid them becoming a rogue force user. The Jedi are all about balance, they're all about um, lack of emotion. They like Jedi are, are sworn to celibacy. Uh, I remember th- I remember this. Yes. 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 Friendship and marriage are frowned upon. Uh, emotional attachments frowned upon. Yeah. And I was they, gonna say it's like, yeah, like a monk's sort of like. Yeah. They they're like don't single entity separate from everything. Yes. So you are it, an island. Yeah. Exactly. So it, it, it's 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 like, hey, use your discipline and your training to manipulate and wield the force. Mm-hmm. Because if you don't, you'll potentially tend to the dark side. Yeah. So we're being tempted by these terrible things. And yes. I'm not saying. Christianity is in everything, but Christianity kind of is in everything. Oh, it is. It straight, it straight, it straight up is. Mm-hmm. But the thing is, like, it doesn't matter if you think you're good or not. They are still basically going to families and taking their children. Yeah. And now it is volu- voluntarily for the most part, but like they are straight up taking someone at the age of like six or younger, mm-hmm. maybe even younger than that, and they are going. Okay, you are never going to see your family again. And you're going to become a Jedi for the Jedi Order. No choice. Basically. Yeah. I mean, it, it's kind of like... It's kind of like... Uh, so many people don't deny it. Because they're sort of like... Well, this is like your this grand... This is just what it is. Yeah, this, this is, is like you your do. grand purpose. Like, this is like... You could, you got, you've got these powers. Unchallenged like... and unquestioned, because yeah. that's how it is. Well, the thing with the Mark series is that... Yes, you get marked out, but you have to go there or you'll die. The whole yeah, it's yeah. like you're gonna turn into a vampire regardless. No, you're you'll die. Oh. So when you're marked, you have like two, maybe three days, to make it to like a community of vampires where there are older, like fully fledged vampires, or else your body will break down and you will just bleed out and die. Okay. Like there is a biological need for fledglings to be taken under the wing of older vampires because they physically need to be near them in proximity to oh, survive. Oh shit! Okay. Yeah. It's a whack. Uh, so they kind of get taken away from their families. There are visiting days, of course. But they just go to these schools where it's safer for them. And they get put into dorms and they just live in their school life, you know, at night, of course, because the sun yes. is more uncomfortable for them. Mm-hmm. Um, and then even then you have to have a strict regimen of healthy eating and like healthy lifestyle, exercising, this and this and that. Or else sometimes out of nowhere, you just seize up, you have a seizure, you bleed and you die. Fuck. Because you just... So this you is definitely make it. this is definitely going to uh, along the lines of like the more sort of like the cursed sort it's of It's like aspect. A, yeah. But then like they also do like um it's kind of like going to church. Everything's a matter of religion. Um <laughs> but they do like uh, circles uh, representing the elements. There's a high priestess that represents all and then there's an uh, an individual that represents each element. It's also like um a sort of feminine hierarchy more likely than than a mm-hmm. not a patriarch it's more of a monarchy not a monarchy matriarchy matriarchy that's the one <laughs> i um, hope it's not a monarchy but... god damn um there's also like a an entire like into the book subplot where the actual high priestess of the school is like actually evil and she's been doing everything all the time because she Woo. wants to be in charge of everything and this the protagonist of course is a chosen one yeah who is going to be the next high priestess um oh. there's also like a uh, some characters who have magic one of them sees visions and she actually gets at one point turned she i think she gets killed and she gets resurrected but she comes back as a human instead of a vampire so she still gets her visions it's just that now her body can't handle it and she just bleeds from her eyes every time because it's so strenuous on oh her oh my god there's also um the high priestess who's trying to bring this demon i think his name is Kalona, um out from like where he was locked away by the goddess so that they make a deal there's just all sorts of things. There was this like bird demon guy who slowly gets turned into a human um, esque thing who mm-hmm. like falls in love with this girl who also uh, a bunch of like fledglings who like don't make it they succumb um, have actually been carted away into sort of experiments into making them sort of like pseudo vampire zombies. Okay. Whack yeah. shit. I love that. Mm. 
It was also the first time um, I, one, read a book as, like, a young teen that had a sex scene in it without realizing what it was until the end. <laughs> Two, the sex scene was the main character and one of her teachers, and it turned out to be that he was manipulating her on behalf of the, like, high priestess. It was a horrible fucking situation. Oh and also, my. her boyfriend walked in, super traumatizing to read. I really hated that. And three, it had the first ever bury a gaze I got, got to experience. So, there's pros and cons to the series, I would say. Oh, my God. That... Like, okay, right, so, like, y- young like young adult books kind of hit you with the what the fuck sometimes. I personally believe that books should all have, like, content and trigger warnings just no, one because... of my One of my favorite series ever has, like, that warning. Yeah, I know that's happening now. It's happening a lot more now. Mm. But when I was, like, 13 reading this... 13? Best? Oh, yeah, maybe even younger. Because um, I was reading them for a few years because the books were coming out as I got older. Yeah. I think I stopped reading them when I was, like, 16. So I must have been, like, maybe 11 or 12, actually. But yeah, um, I don't know, man. There's some fucked up shit in YA fiction that they just hit you with. I also read another book by the same author, and it was... This has nothing to do with anything, but it was... Uh, essentially, a woman had been transported to this like, sort of fantasy realm, mm. um, and it was another high priestess who is like sort of her alternate dimension self, who yeah. is evil and has seen visions into the modern world with its, like, airplanes and modern conveniences and said i want that yeah so she like makes a ritual drops all of her responsibilities as a leader to her community to go to the human world wait so there's a whole other vampire world like it's oh a no whole... sorry this has nothing to do with anything okay right. um this is by the same author right so it's good. um and this woman then like ends up in the fantasy world and, oh whatever and whatever and um one of the plot points is that she is betrothed to this guy already so she has like meet him and he's a centaur and like once a month during a special ritual, he can turn himself into a man so that they can commit coitus. <laughs> Except that there was a scene in the woods where she rides around on his back as he is a horse and like gets herself jacked off on his back, I guess, which is also whack to read. As a. It's like a 14 year old, I think. What the? Wild. F- okay. Wild. But yeah, that's nothing to do with the vampires. That's just like kind of fucked I, up. I thought you were just gonna say she took horse dick, but like no, she was then like, oh how, and then she was like, well that was lovely. How can I pleasure you? And he laughed at her and said, I would kill you because horse dick. <laughs> <laughs> you don't need to do full. You can anyway. So you got but anyway. Wait, we're gonna anyway. We're, any, yeah, we shouldn't talk about this. On Other vampire YouTube. series um, <laughs> was sort of like a. It was a nice play on the usual YA. I'm just like, I'm not like other girls, and I show up in a new town, and oh my god, vampires, and I'm special because of that. Mm-hmm. Twilight. <clears throat> she goes to university in this like desert town. I can't yeah. remember what American state it's in. And essentially, it's um, this town has been like founded for like the last 200 years, and it's all run by vampires, and it has been mm-hmm. since it was like created. And it's been created not quite as a trap for food. But as a trap for food. Right, I see what you mean. It's kind of like... It, it's a human town, but like... Yes, out. but the thing is, this is the last like vampire community that exists. Because oh. they've all been hunted down. So this is the only way they can survive, because they can't separate. They have to stay together. Yeah. The residents know that the vampires are there. And they can't do anything about it, because the vampires run the government. So they have some negotiation power, but not much. And there's like agreements that once a month, or once a week or something... Once a month, everybody has to donate a certain amount of blood. Yeah. And then you get to stay safe because of that. And then tourists and university students are fair game, essentially, for vampires. Jesus. Yeah, it's whack shit. And um, there's a whole bunch of like different things going on where she like finds this thing and she, she befriends some people who are, like, are residents and she moves in with them and this and that. And it was such, a, such an interesting play on the whole, like, why a protagonist interacting with, like, oh, a new, like, supernatural species. And I just... It was so much more brutal and guttural. Yeah. Where the presentation of, you know, literally immortal and really old people, like beings that are not human, set this whole thing up and you are a plaything. You are stuck there, you are trapped there because these are bigger than you. Yeah. They are so it, much yeah, bigger it, than it, you, there's it's... nothing you can do about it. <laughs> it's it, it, it's like the uh, it's like it's like the Incredibles meme where it's like you seeing someone who you could easily like beat and like not na- like kill in natural selection, but you but you can't because you have to earn tokens to like buy food. Like 
like the kind of the thing of like the the societal thing of you can earn your way up through jobs and like you know a civilized human like series of skills uh, is gone like you're back to that natural selection thing of there's this bigger threat than you you have to do what it says or it will to. kill you exactly um and one thing that was really fun and funky actually is that she ends up getting like a job through the rose because she's a stem student because she is a woman in stem um and i do like her she was a fun um she was a fun protagonist because she mm-hmm. was very practical there's also one scene where they have to like fight to get out of a vampire's office and they grab like a number two pencil and just stab him in the chest and like that doesn't kill him but it does like pause him for a while when he tries to get the pencil out of his chest <laughs> um and she works for this guy this like ancient old kind of crazy vampire who like used to be like an alchemist and an astronomer and all the old-fashioned science things and he's just this like crazy little guy scuttling around in the basement and she's like I am your new science intern. Let's do some technology. And he's like, mm, I've been told I'm not allowed to kill you, but okay, I guess. And she's just there trying to be like, and this is an iPad. You can use it for so many things. <laughs> One thing that did stress me out, I think it was the last book I read before. Giving the I... iPad to your boomer grandma pumper. Fucking literally. I think he's just like the gremlin that crawls around the ceiling, I think. Mm-hmm. But one thing, and I will never forget this series because of this. Um, it was the last book that got like released before I stopped reading. And there's this moment where he's, like, trying to save her life. So he's like, oh, I'm sending you away, and I'm going to take the brunt of whatever is happening. And then he turns to go, and he says, go, go away, you know, be, be safe and leave. Ver and will. And he fucking speaks Welsh. So he's some ancient Welsh vampire the whole time. Oh. For context, if you guys are listening, I am Welsh. I'm from Wales. Welsh is my first language. And it was a one slap to the face to see my own language yeah, like in a I, in an American book, like or just at all, because like because like, Welsh is like never shown. Yeah, Welsh is. Um, we're making a comeback. We're doing great. We're we'll back up to thirty percent of the population. But uh, for the last like 20, 30 years, it's been on the decline. We've been at like below twenty percent of the population of the country, which is only like three million. And from the early twentieth century, we've been at a rapid decline from seventy percent or all the way down to twenty percent. So to see that in a book was whack second of all wrathful because it was clearly google translate (laughs) because it was inaccurate and i was so upset so i mean at least they tried i mean it was two words literally just like hire someone it's not that difficult just just hire someone or just google welsh pet names because what he says is ver and will yeah which one awkwardly phrased two is like it is like it, what, what she meant what, to say. What was she trying to say? Yeah. My dear. My dear, yeah. And Ver Anwil is. My dear. But Anwil is more of. Okay, you can use Anwil in two contexts, in my personal opinion, which is one, dear in the sense of I'm writing a letter to you, I'm addressing you in a letter. Ah, uh, I see. Anwil Joe. Sedute. Or two, to describe someone not as like a pet name. I would not address anybody as Anwil as a pet name because it's more of an adjective. Yeah, it's more like dear grandma, like kind of yeah. thing. Like my, my dear friend or what have you. Yes. Like Anwil is someone who's like sweet, they're dear, you know? Okay, yeah. I would not yeah. address someone as Anwil. It just doesn't sit right. And we have so many more words that you could have used. But yeah, Welsh vampire, I guess. <laughs> Welsh went, vampire went, oh. rap, but I'm not happy about it. Okay, okay. Um, well, vampires can't learn Welsh, apparently. Uh, I would like to talk about um, a series that I watched very recently, mm-hmm. um, which I have recommended to you. It's called Vampire in the Garden. Vampire in the Garden, yeah. I think I've got that written down somewhere. Uh, I will not spoil things for you if you do not want. Uh, mm, I do want to watch it. Okay. Do I enjoy a good um, vampire it's a, media consumption? Yeah. I, the, the story itself kind of throws you for a loop, but like the world itself is really interesting. Mm-hmm. Um, so the way that vampires work in um, this this world uh, is that it's kind of like a strange post-apocalypse um like like 80s russia it's really weird it, it's kind of like it's like it's kind of like if the cold war like began and then like it just kept going but it was against vampires um mm-hmm, mm-hmm. uh so is he- that why they call it a cold war i'm sorry uh <laughs> fucking i 
I can't. Uh, so I'll remove myself from the podcast, don't worry. Yeah, remove yourself from this room. I'm leaving. Immediately. Uh, but yeah, uh, so the vampires in that um, are extremely... Well, they're all pale, they all have white hair, red eyes. That They all look like that. Like They're the, little anime boys. They are little anime boys. Kind of think, obsessed. Think about, like, Juzo from fucking Tokyo Girl. I love that gendered bitch. Um, and humanity kind of have locked themselves into these, like, fortress towns. I'm not saying Attack on Titan esque, but it is, it, on it, 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 it is kind of Attack on Titan. Mm-hmm. Like, sort of. And they have, like, basically what is UV light, basically. Like, they have ah. these special lamps, which, like, like basically show sunlight uh, and they use them to like basically like scour the entire like surrounding and what have you. They don't quite do that in Morganville Vampires but you know I said she's she's a woman in STEM yeah. and she makes like a UV light bomb. Yeah yeah yeah. That like so, she can throw. Sa- it. Sa- same sort of thing. Yeah it gives her a sunburn at some point. Also a thing that is interesting um, with vampires uh, they never really show how to kill them they just kind of shoot them with guns. Vampires can just be killed. They can they can grow, they can age, and they can ah, die. So it's less um, terribly infected beast, immortal demon, more different species. Yeah, it's also like... Can you be infected? I, I just can't remember. Like, th- th- this is like the super interesting thing, because hmm. like... Like... In vampirism and what have you within that, people do have, like, humans that they just feed on. Mm-hmm. Uh, and, like, that doesn't infect them. So it's like... A little snack. Yeah, so it's, they're literally just there for, 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 for little munchies. And I don't think that they can be turned into vampires. I think they are a separate species. Like, entirely. Interesting. It's kind of like ghouls. Tokyo ghoul. Yeah, kind of. Yeah, you can't be I cool, might be can wrong you? about it. I might can be. You? I, no, no, no. Tokyo Ghoul, like you can't. Yeah, you uh, either it, are you're just a you're born, not, you're just except born, like, for Mr. Tokyo Ghoul himself. Uh, yeah, except Mr. Because there is that little kid that lives in the coffee shop. And yeah, yeah. She grows up. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Um, so like, this is like the first, like one of the first scenes because the the perspective of the main character you play from, who is a human, she is a soldier, and because she was raised like that, it's basically a military town. And there's this kid vampire, who uh, she, who is like crying in the corner. Vampires aren't evil, in the same way that humans aren't evil. In they're this. just people. They are just people, and they're being they're in this they're locked in this stupid war because they won't get along with each other. The the now, vampires do need to drink blood to survive, and the main character vampire that you have does not like drinking blood. She hates killing people. Mm-hmm. Um, and basically, you have the human character who hates the war. And everything going on, and the vampire character who also hates the war and hates killing people, oh, and they besties? and they kind of form a friendship from that. And it's an interesting kind of thing of like, just it's it's like it's it's a very basic story of like oh the, 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 there's no war is wrong. <laughs> like, I mean, like, yeah. And it, and but it's an interesting take on it. I like that. Yeah, and like they do find like places that have more of a sort of Balance. co-op yeah, yeah like a co-op. more of a, more of a cooperation these places aren't always the best mm-hmm. because they they find this place which is like two towns one of them's a vampire town one of them's a human town the humans literally send over slaves for them to feed them and the vampires offer them protection and also like co- commerce interesting uh also i do think that like their vampire forms are like one of my favorite things ever because they they don't turn into bats but like they fly and the way that they fly is that like you know bat wings, right? Mm-hmm. The way that bat wings work is that they have the arm and then they have the hand and their fingers basically extend, form... Extend, yeah. The, the extended sort of parts and they form and they and then the membrane attaches to that. Mm-hmm. They do that. They transform their hands into that and they fly like that. Just their hands? Just their hands. Like some kind of fucked up dragonfly? Yeah. Kind of obsessed. It's really cool. I, I think it's a very fun idea. Also, another thing that is kind of... It's not really kind of explained, but it's kind of like... It's like a new weapon that's been developed, like, during the war, is that the vampires have developed this drug, which essentially turns them into this nightmare bat creature, which can, like, basically... Go feral. Go feral, kills about maybe, like, 50 people, and then dies. 
Oh, so like a berserker, yeah, like, suicide. It's a bomber, suicide. Yeah, sort of it, it's it's like, like a, a kamikaze. Vamp- yeah, it's like a vampire suicide bomber. Like, kind of like the arcane. Um, you know when they go on. Oh, Shimmer. Uh, Shimmer. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, Shimmer doesn't kill you. I don't think, but like, no. se- but similar sort of vibe yeah, 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 yeah. is like, like yeah. You... When you were describing those wings, it reminded me of another YA vampire novel. Oh, lovely. I was deep in the source in my early teens. Let me tell you that much for a start. I can't for the life of me remember the name, but it's on my Kindle somewhere. Mm-hmm. And it was this like woman. She goes to a town. It's not a YA. Um, it was like a general sort of vampire. I eventually graduated from YA with like actual grown up vampire sort of situations. A lot of people with a lot of very interesting different takes on vampire lore. Um, anyway, this one in particular was like, hey, I've come into this town. I live here now, and this guy, and whatever it was, he was a vampire, and so were like his friends and this and that. And it was sort of like a slow trying to climb to figure out what the fuck is up with this guy and why he's being so hot and cold because, you know, it's a romance novel. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then it's like, oh, I'm a vampire and I actually have to leave because humans and vampires aren't allowed to, like, marry and interact and stuff because it just wouldn't work out. Yeah. And then, like, you find out in, like, the second book or at the end of the first book, her and two other individuals are actually children who are a product of scientific experimentation about crossing over human and vampires. Okay. Humans and vampires. So... She ends up finding out that, yes, she has the similar powers to these guys, it just takes a while to, like, evolve. And all three of them can produce wings in different ways. Okay. And when they take, they find this out, like, the, the, she finds these two other people who are like, we've been looking for you, and she's like, who the fuck are you? And she's like, get an x-ray. We're gonna x-ray you. And they all get x-rays of their torsos, mm-hmm. and they all have, like, these extra bones under their skin. So one of them straight up has, like, from like their hip to their wrist oh, down. between that is just like a whole ass flap like a skin thing like the whole arm yeah like a bat for real her i think she had like an actual bat wings sort of situ bat wings demon wings sort of situation under her skin beneath her like shoulder blades and you could see it in the x-ray because like the fingers of it curled around her ribs whack shit so i can't remember anything else yeah. about the series but they all had these like mutations adapting mm. and accounting for the fact that they are like um half breeds essentially so it's kind of yeah like yeah they, they had these traits which were not necessarily intentional but like as a side effect of like mm-hmm. that's 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 a fun aesthetic it I, really like... was and i feel like these these women are out there like writing romance novels and using vampirism as like a mechanism of it but they're bringing so many interesting concepts to the table and they never follow up on them and i it's such a shame sometimes. Mm. There was also this other one called Sandra Moon, I think, and she was a vampire detective in the sense of she is just a suburban mum <laughs> um, who got turned into a vampire and attack at some point in like her yeah. 30s or 40s, and now she just does like um, nighttime private investigation work, and a lot of it ends up being on the supernatural side. Oh, okay. And she just has like a freezer in her, like this massive chest freezer in her like um, in her garage where she keeps, like, a bunch of, like, meat and stuff from the butcher. The butcher, like, she has a deal with the butcher. No, yeah, straight up blood um, that's been drained from the butcher. Mm-hmm. Um, and she just has to guzzle that down, even though it's, like, completely contaminated. And it's, like, full of hair and, like, fibres and tissue oh. and stuff. And she, like, guzzles that down every now and then. And she can go out for a meal, but she has to, like, have super, super rare steak. And she can just suck the blood out of it and then leaves the meat pieces on the table. <laughs> and, like, she misses red wine... And she misses... I think she can still drink red wine, but only a little bit. Um, She's intolerant. Oh, kind of, but, like, she, like... It's the tannings. If her, like, parents... If her, if her, if her children are away and there's nobody there, she will eat an entire box of chocolates and then throw it all up within, like, ten minutes because she can't contain it, but she misses being human so much. She misses the flavor Again, of anything so that's not blood. Again, so it got, like, the Tokyo Ghoul kind of, yeah. like... Um, oh, what's the other it's one? It's a curse this time. I yeah, like it, it, when it, vampirism is a curse and, like, a real one. Not a Stephanie Meyer... I'm just so beautiful. I've got superpowers. I literally glitter, but oh my god, I'm such a monster curse. Like yeah, like um. I like a tortured vampire. Yeah, I mean, I mean, you could argue that what we do in the shadows is like a proper, like actual vampire curse. Right. See, no. Be- yeah. Because yeah. like they, they, the show is fucking hilarious. But like, they have to drink blood. They have to. They have to. Like they and they have to like follow certain things. They can't touch silver. Like it's all very traditional vampire sort of like thing. What we do in the shadows is so so fun and interesting to me because while it's a comedy, it is one of the only like modern adaptations to um, like show classic an original vampire story that's not just Dracula, 
that holds true to so many of the original myths. Yeah, it, it's almost like <laughs> I hate saying this phrase, but like the the fucking the Nosferatu expanded universe. Like you have like the original mm-hmm. first ever vampire, and then like it's like like Dracula is probably canon in that sort of like. He mu- I hope they bring Dracula up at some point. He's never been mentioned. Like th- that's a point actually. Yeah, maybe it's because of copyright stuff. No, I think Drac- Dracula is open domain, or else we wouldn't be having so much. That's why Dracula Daily is happening. Oh yeah. Dracula is open, like free domain. That does make sense. But, but yeah, yeah, but yeah, like that, and also they're super faithful to it. Like, th- like it's consistent. Yeah, like it, they don't make the characters like endearing through bit them being nice they're not nice they fucking no, eat monsters. people they eat people of course they do Guillermo has his whole breakdown about it because he's like I'm having to come to terms with the fact that I've been literally feeding people to my vampires what does that make me you know I, it's oh, it's such a good media but um, there's so many things that the vampires do like they transform into the bat to the bat yeah excuse me but they can also transform into literally any animal which is not incorrect and also the whole like creatures of the night wolves we have a certain level of command over them in the same way that like these guys have what i enjoy which is like a mind over matter thing where nandor who is one of the um three vampires four but we don't talk about colin robinson three (laughs) vampires colin robinson is just some guy (laughs) he's literally just some guy and i hate him so much um the three vampires in this house chair where he can't really hypnotize somebody he's like oh i can hypnotize someone but they have to want to do it first where it's not even really hypnosis he just doesn't really want to make people do things against their will so his powers don't work yeah of course i love that yeah yeah it, it, it's also interesting like how on an individual basis the like the, the different characters have like different abilities and what have you they're just good at different things which yeah think exactly is neat. yeah like uh nadia is like good at like crawling, crawling. <laughs> she's, I, a good, she's a good crawler crawl. Yeah, she's yeah. a creepy crawler. And there was that other one from the actor. She's from uh... Gravity Falls. Um, the no, 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 not Mabel. Um, the, the other one, the one that gets turned into a vampire and she turns invisible. Oh, oh my god! Uh, it's um, from uh, Booksmart. Oh, I can't. Have you ever seen Booksmart? No, I've not. No. Uh, she kind of like. Uh, goes to a party and then like yeah like, oh no like, I know I know yeah, her yeah, oh, I know, you her, know, yeah. Yeah, I know okay. her in the in the in the media yeah in the the what we do in the shadows yeah her ability to turn literally invisible oh, it's just it's good it's so good they turn into the bats but they turn into I find the it inter- but I find this interesting how like apparently your vampirism can change depending on your personality I, yeah in the same like what your skills are because I think that yeah. technically if you practice enough you could do all of these things. It's just a matter of, like, what you are naturally mm. good at. Like, okay, you can turn into... They can turn into vapors, which I think is great. And they mostly pull that out for, like, gags and stuff. But, like, yeah. you turn into the vapor, they can't be seen in reflections. Which I think is really interesting. Because bringing it back to, like, um, the old sort of Christian, religious, like, post-pagan yeah. um, interpretation of vampirism as, like, a devilish demonic curse uh a lot of old wives tales a lot of old fables and stories and like monsters are sort of semi-based in science but also semi-based in like the magic that is religion so silver was believed to be something that can ward off evil even being werewolves and vampires yeah um and in like the last like few decades they found out that silver actually is um antibacterial mm-hmm. they lace socks with silver now to make them like less smelly because they're antibacterial they use silver in like um silver socks yeah they, they you can have like socks that have silver in them they're pretty common in a lot of places because oh, they less stinky they stay clean better they're, they're less like bacterial that's crazy it's antibacterial like they detest where you put silver down um in like a petri dish and the bacteria will not cross the silver because it repels it and that's scientist, that's scientific, that, that is science that we know now, but they managed to sort of connect the dots, even if it's not quite right, in why silver can help heal a wound. Yeah, it, it's, 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 it's such a weird sort of like thing. Of garlic like... is the same. It's also antibacterial, which is what garlic is believed to be anti-vampire. Yeah, yeah, but it's like, it, it's... It's like you look back and you kind of go, these people were stupid, but they were still... 
working off of some sort of reasoning. They had a. They just didn't have all the pieces. They had. What they, pieces they had they the had. right idea. Is it, It's like they um, got the right answer, just using the wrong logic. Yeah, it's like um, it's like the four humors. Oh, do you know? Are you familiar? Oh, the, there's the mm, blood and then phlegm and yeah, those, the four, you know, the, the four, the four, yeah, the four humors. Bile. Yeah, bile's one. Well, there's two types of bile. Oh Jesus! There's black bile and yellow bile. And their reasoning, basically, what happened was uh, Hippocrates mm-hmm. um, came up with this idea of the four humors. It was developed further by Galen, who also kind of maybe copied it and took credit. But essentially, this was like the main idea that like you have these four things in your body. They are associated with the four Greek elements, Mm -hmm. and you need to keep all of them in balance. You need to have enough blood, but not too much blood. You need to have enough phlegm, but not too much phlegm, because like they saw when people were ill and like they had a cold and they were blowing their nose. It's like oh, you have too much phlegm. Yeah. Thing is though, this was like the very beginning of like kind of well, yeah, like scientific thinking in medicine Mm -hmm. then the dark ages happened of course (laughs) and because galen was a a roman fuckboy uh he basically uh made all of his scientific findings work with the idea of christianity Mm -hmm. and so dark ages being a very very christian time they those medical practices remained unchanged for hundreds of years yeah so people were getting bled, people were getting, like, oh, like were, yeah, like, were, they were getting purged, like, and, and, like, the thing is, half of it works. Mm-hmm. Like, 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 the idea of a blood transfusion is there. Yeah. Like, that is something Get that... the bad blood out, the good blood in. Yeah, I mean, not necessarily bad blood out. They didn't really put blood in. Yeah. Uh, because... But that's what it is now, essentially. Yeah, 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 exactly. So it's... It's really interesting to see that, like, this sort of level of thinking was still there. They just needed more time. Yes. Um, yeah. Uh, I, 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 it was like, um, what was the other thing? Yeah, it's like another crazy thing. I might have mentioned this before, but, and I don't know the specifics of it. You'll have to look it up. But the pyramid, the Great Pyramid of Giza, like mm-hmm. the, the big one, apparently the ratio of, like, the dimensions of it can be divided uh, or like that like you can do some sort of ma- basic maths with it like either you divide like the uh the diameter by the 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 diagonal height and so- or something like that and you do all this stuff and if you get it to like the equation like in this correct equation i don't know what it is for the life of me but apparently that makes the circumference of the world whack Whack shit, actually. What the fuck? I hate maths. I actually hate maths, actually. That's I hate so maths as well. Up. This is why I'm so bad at explaining That's it. That's so fucked but, up. But the thing is... that this Is that a coincidence? What is that? How does that happen? Is that a coincidence or is that like a mathematical object that can determine the circumference of the world? How would they have done that? Well, actually, no. In all fairness, um, it is during this time where they had the... Oh my god, what are they called? Those spikes that they have that just stand up, you know? Right? Oh, yes, uh, the obelisks. Obelisks, right. They yeah, yeah, obelisks. They're, they're clocks, yeah. Yeah, they're clocks, but they're not just clocks. Um, there was a, I think he, he might have been either a map maker or a scientist, something along those lines, where he was travelling from Egypt yeah. to Rome. He was travelling from different parts of Egypt, I think. I'd have to double check this yeah. to be sure. Um, but it was like a few, like, it was like a certain amount of time and journey, and he did the maths. He, he went from one obelisk in the south, sa- uh, in the south, right, uh, at a certain amount of time, and he travelled to the next obelisk. And while he was in those positions, he measured the length of the shadow, and using like an equation that would calculate um, and take into account the time of day and the tourist distance travelled, he realised that the world must be curved. Mm-hmm. Because if the world is flat, then these two shadows should be the same. Should be the same length at the same time of day. Yeah, and but they are not, and that is because the sun is coming in at an angle because the world is curved, which means yeah. the world is round. Yeah, and this is during the Egyptians. Yep. No, these, this is before. Um, the, the Egypt, I'm, I'm, I'm pretty sure. I'm pretty sure the Egypt, ancient Egyptians believed the world was round. I mean, if that pyramid thing is like correct, I mean, again, the, it might not be. But, I'm <laughs> but, feeling but, like but, we like, are now to pre-medieval um, peasants. 
scholars will be generous two pre-medieval scholars we're, trying to connect the dots we just don't understand we, we're enough. having we're having a conversation over our over our like meal of bread and lard and we are discussing this and we are about to be carted off and burned for being witches oh for sure oh absolutely for sure it's I, not even for the science crimes because we're <laughs> we, yeah we're just freaks like that just i like i that. get burned the stake with you bestie bestie <laughs> cute saturday ideas get burned at the stake together Ooh. Uh, there yeah. is, there is, um, uh, there is one more vampire trope, mm-hmm. which uh, I would like to talk about. Can I finish mirrors? Oh yes, please do. Yes. Yeah, so the whole like uh, old ye old timey sciencey religiony fusion where they're using the wrong equation, getting the right answer. Um, one thing that never sits well with me is people not doing their research when they're like, oh my god, and this vampire in 2016, he didn't have a reflection. Uh, the reason that the logic, the the logic behind vampires not having a reflection is because during the time that the Holm vampire mythos was developing, is because vampire uh, because mirrors were one very rare, mm. and two they were rare because they were silver backed. Yeah, they're so, silver backed. So yeah, again, silver backed silver... with glass atop it, and that is how you had a reflection. Mm. Was it great quality? But that is how mirrors worked, and because they believed in the inherent sort of holiness of silver in the same way that it would kill a werewolf if you shot it. Would it. Not, it would not show... It would not reflect something evil back mm. out into the world. Mm-hmm. Mirrors these days, especially, like, like they're not silver-backed anymore. I don't think they have been for a very long time. And that's, like, the one thing that always bothers me in, like, modern vampire media when it's like, oh my god, his reflection wasn't there. And it's like, why, bestie? There's no reason it shouldn't be there. Yeah, yeah. The, there is the, no reason. This it is something be there. I was thinking about before. Is that yeah, like it, there's no silver in mirrors anymore. But also as well, when you think about it, maybe they just believe that the reflection won't be there, so it won't. Mm. Clothes. Clothes should show up. Clothes should show up. They're not part of the vampire, so why don't they? Hence, vampires are doing it deliberately, subconsciously. It depends on the media, but most of the time, yeah. I th- I think I think there's like. I think it's interesting that this is subconscious sort of like either like guilt or shame or something that they do not wish to see themselves like even, mm, they might not even yeah. know about it even if they not enjoy... being able to even face your own reflection yeah because kind of you are thing. so tainted accursed so on so on see th- this is something that like it wasn't explored in a, th- this specific thing wasn't explored but it was like in it was in the the Dracula TV series, the BBC one. Oh, it was I was like need three to episodes. Watch though, it's on my watch list. It's very good, but it deal it it talks a lot. It's very weird, but like it's good. Um, for something written by, oh fuck, what's he called the, uh, the misogynistic gay man. Oh, not Moffat. Moffat. No, not Moffat. He's not gay. Um, Moffat's alright. Oh, uh, he was. Mm, I know who he is. I know who he is. He ruined everything. Uh, uh, he's in League of Gentlemen. He plays Mycroft in in Sherlock. Yeah, I know exactly. Uh, Mark Gatiss. Mark Gatiss. We should have remembered his name's Gatiss. <sighs> yeah, but anyway, uh, he wrote that. It's honestly pretty good, but it it talks a lot about like uh, what uh, vampires. It talks about like it's it's an interesting take on all the weaknesses and tropes that vampires mm-hmm. have is what i'll say i'm not gonna say anything more i would really recommend you watch it though it's quite good i mean one of the weaknesses of vampires in a, in a very traditional sense is like if you drop something in front of them they have to stop to count it so like if you, okay you are a vampire i forgot about that one. i just pour a bag of rice on the ground and then i can just walk away at a snail's pace because you have to yeah or like being, count the rice or grains. like being invited in it's all like yeah yeah it's well, i'm not gonna say anything more because it will spoil it Ooh, okay. um but yes, there is one more trip of vampires yes, I want to talk hit about. Yes, me with it. I'm very sorry. It is a Warhammer thing. Oh god, it's always a Warhammer thing. But it's interesting. Mm-hmm. Uh, so, uh, I talked in the Warhammer episode about Space Marines. The Space Marines the, the, who are absolutely off the shit's insane. Yeah, they all kind of are insane. The, the gist of how they work is, again, like the Jedi, they are taken at a young age. Mm-hmm. Uh, they go through a shit bunch of trials. If they survive those trials, then they will begin genetic mutation mm-hmm. addition of like parts extra organs new oh, organs i could do with some new lungs i'll be honest yeah they, they take me like recruitments or PTs. uh yeah in forty thousand years from now i'll put it on my calendar yeah sure <laughs> um but uh and then if they survive like the process of transformation 
then they will become space marine and da 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 they can go kill aliens. The thing is though, they all have this thing called a gene seed, and the gene seed is something that is, if you're one of the original 20 chapters, it is a direct DNA fragment from their Primarch, the Primarchs being the 20, you know the boys who had daddy issues? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah the, the, the dad was like the son or something, some, some fucked up shit was happening. Some fucked up shit was happening. I remember but, but the but the gene seed of the Primarch Sanguinius is in the chapter called the Blood Angels. I really that's such a cool name. It's such a cool that's name. Such a cool name. Now Sanguinius, he cra basically all of them crashed as you know they I'm sure you I'll but I'll repeat. Uh, <laughs> they all crashed on like various different planets. Sanguinius was uh -huh. a ba a little baby, gorgeous blonde hair, a pair of angel's wings sprouting from his back. Like that was his. That was the genetic mutations that he had. Little baby boy. He was raised on the planet. He grew up, sort of became ruler of the planet because all that's the, just what they're yeah, basically it, supposed to do. Yeah, basically, and then they were eventually were found, and they were like, "Hey, here's your blood angels. Cool, epic." The blood angels are kind of vampires. Um, they will sometimes. It's kind of like. All of the lore in Warhammer is kind of from the hum human perspective. So sometimes it will say like it will say like yeah these records are kind of expunged. But sometimes when blood angels are guarding a planet, so multiple people will sometimes go missing and be found with blood drain from their bodies. So whatever the Sanguinius had mm -hmm. is kind of like put into all of the normal humans that have been turned into these space marines. Yeah. And they are now cursed with this. The thing That's is though. So interesting though. Sanguinius is dead. Right? right? And Sanguinius was so beloved by his chapter that when he died, a psychic, basically, explosion occurred within every single one of the Blood Angels it, and every future Blood Angel to come. So now they are cursed even more and with this thing called the Black Rage. The Black Rage essentially is that at some point, maybe potentially, but almost definitely, a blood angel will start seeing visions of the last dying moments of their Primarch. Oh my god. And be filled with the same hatred and like... Basically, the way that Sanguinius died was like he was fighting Horas. Oh, Horas, yeah. Horas him. killed him and then basically the Emperor immediately entered the room and that's the final conflict. Mm -hmm. So Sanguinius like died basically trying to save humanity. And he was filled with so much sadness and regret and rage that like it basically blasted its way across every single other blood angel and now they have the chance to relive that and they might go insane and start just killing people randomly they will start seeing horus in their dreams and they will just start killing people it doesn't matter who they are there's a commentary on daddy issues and intergenerational trauma right imagine there. how bad your daddy issues are when when you die because of your daddy issues every single one of your children gets daddy issues as well honestly I think that's just how daddy issues work. It kind of is, honestly. I think that's how it works. But, like, so they already have this vampirism thing, but they also have this sort of, like, e And now ever, they have e psychic damage. Yeah, they have this ever trudging forward closer want to kill. And, like, it has tried to have been cured. Like, there, there have been, like, I think two individuals which have gotten over it. Oh. Two. Ah, that's actually not quite a lot, is it? No, it's... Not a lot. Especially when you think of the context of how big space is and mm -hmm. how big, like, like this is multiple planets, like, worth of, like, people. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Sometimes. That's fucking work. That's insane. It's so... I and, love and, it, the, and the thing, Yeah, and the thing is, they literally have no idea how to stop it. Sometimes they put them into, like, cryogenic freezing mm -hmm. to, like, s store their bodies before they, you know, Go do off. that. Sometimes, and most of the time, what happens when a blood angel starts to experience the black rage, they will be put into what's called the death company. And the death company, they mark their armor black, and what they do is, the death company's job is to basically go into battle, as per normal, but your job is to die. Jesus. Yeah. And that's basically it. Um, Whack and a hot take. I really like that. Yeah, it's it's a it's a it's a fun little thing. Weird thing is though, Sanguinius is never really shown to drink blood. He kind of just doesn't care. But all the rest, it, it's weird. I, I I think he's too big, big balls for that. I guess I don't know. It's below him. It's below him. I don't need to drink blood. He is kind of a gay like 
twunk though. Twunk. 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 Not the twunk. The twunk, like a twink. A combination hunk. twink and hunk. Yes, yeah, of course. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I just thought you. I thought you said twunk, and I was like, did you twink. maybe just <laughs> did you butcher twink that much? Butchered my twink, and then I freaked it. <laughs> I think that's a good place to put up today's episode. <laughs> I, I, think, I think it is as well. Look, we've um, gotten to exactly an hour almost. Almost. Um, I will say, uh, we have not touched on Twilight. I have. That is a shame. So, oh, I, I think we need an entire uh, Twilight dedicated yeah, episode. Yeah, I think we do, because you know so much. I, I regretfully know so much. There's so much fucked up things. The plot, the character is insane. But also, the vampire biology is just so absolutely batshit. I think it's actually really cool. Like, I think it's it like... It is, but it's like... It, it, it's insane, it, it, but it like... It makes me feel like I'm crawling up the walls. Yeah, the world building is like kind of insane in that. And like, for someone who made it as like a My Chemical Romance fan fiction... Oh my god, Stephanie. Like, Stephanie will write whatever she needs to to be able to facilitate her fantasy without realizing that she's doing things that are so batshit. I want to look inside her brain. And it all started because of 9-11. Thank you for listening, everybody. <laughs> Have a wonderful uh, rest of your day or night or... We'll be back next time with... Um, we could do Twilight next time or we can do... I really... Oh God, I want to talk about the vampire babies. They're so fucked up. Okay, well, we'll talk about Twilight next time. I would love to talk about Twilight next time. Here's to hoping for a Twilight episode, because that, that, it's just nonsense. It's nonsense. We'll, we'll have to do a come sign with me for, like... Oh, God, we don't even have time for a come sign with me. Uh, whatever is, the answer is blood, blood, and more blood, I Oh, I, I meant, I meant, like, with Twilight. We'll have to do one for them. <sighs> that would be incredible, actually. You know, uh, uh, you've seen the you've not even seen the first Twilight film, have you? No, I've seen bits. I no, I've seen the first one. Oh, mm, the one when of the best scenes is we're making her Italian food. Is she even Italian? Her name is Bella. Incredible <laughs> scene, incredible scene, incredible writing, and they just they they put that out there with a straight face. Quickly they before, to before it. let's end the recording before um we do that. Yeah, we're not gonna slip into a Twilight episode. Yeah, I, I'm probably gonna like end the recording like a little a few minutes before this. I understand. Uh, but yeah, uh, yeah. Uh, yeah if you slap this back last bit on, which is a thank you very much. Suck blood, suck dick. Sell drugs. Bye. <laughs> <laughs> fucking end it, fucking close it. it.